everybody. Welcome to the 50-somethings. We're living life to the fullest and practicing for retirement. And this here whole wall right here is going to get replaced uh, within the next day or so. I'm not really in a big hurry. But I'm going 24 inches up off of my bottom line. And that's where most of the damage gets done. As you can see right here, basically it's moisture. A lot of it's probably my sprinkler system that I've allowed to touch the bottom of the house. But also when we purchased this house, someone had done, I wouldn't call this a very good repair. They went and spliced in about 12 inches worth of uh, replacement siding and you can see it's pretty soft so we're gonna go in and we're gonna replace all the bad siding and actually just work as I feel like it you know house is not gonna fall down and to be quite honest with you I'm too old to be doing this full time <laughs> but no seriously all I'm saying is that you don't have to do it all at one time this was a morning's work for me I prepped all my siding weeks ago primed it and painted it so it's good and cured I bought all my materials. It's been sitting here on the floor in my garage. I got up this morning, cut it out. Okay, so this right here is just a sample piece I'm showing you. This is the channel that goes underneath the good siding on the wall. And then you place your replacement underneath it. And it provides, as you can see right here, a little a bit of a channel for when the water comes down, it's gonna run down the channel and down the front side of your replacement. Uh, replacement siding and that way you don't have any water moisture now this right here is some completed siding and i'm gonna go ahead and go all the way around my house just so the house looks uniform okay so basically i took my siding that is pre-cut already primed and painted and i laid it down on top of my thermal ply and i just took a straight edge razor and i cut it so now we're going to cut that section out. You see we've made, our, I don't know if you can tell or not, but we have made our snap line at 24 inches. Right there for the first section to come out. Okay, now we've got our cuts made and hope to God they're straight, right? <laughs> now you can have a little bit of error there. That's what caulking's for. And not to mention that we already realized that the builder of the house wasn't perfect. So now I'm gonna cut all the caulking away because I had to take my edge boards off, as you can see right here. And I'm gonna try to save that, that uh, material and put it right back on. that's rotted out yeah. right here replaced. Oh, so that'll get replaced right now Laura's looking for termite tracks because if you got them you want to treat for it which I'm gonna treat this wood anyway yeah we treated the but you can see the lower edge yeah. is rotted out so we're gonna replace yeah. these trim boards anyway this is... and now I'm gonna work my way around and so start taking off the main boards and right here is one of the problems is that you notice when people build and you can see right here there is absolutely no moisture protection no primer no paint on the edge of the board and that's where it started rotting at and then of course it just worked its way right on down through the main siding which does have some it looks like it's got paint on it but there's no primer 
So if you're gonna do the job, I recommend you spend the extra money and it is rather expensive for the primer and the paint. And I'll go over all that later. But you won't be out here doing this work over and over again like I'm doing right now. And this, for, uh, this is from the, I'm gonna have to assume, the original build of the house, to be honest with you. So if you ever wondered how a house is built, it's not that difficult. You see here you have your framework. This right here is your inside um, plasterboard or whatever you want to call it. But you see your two by fours to your frame of your house, which is lag screwed or lag bolted, I should say, down to your concrete slab. Okay, I found one structural problem, and that is on this 2x4 right here. It looks like somebody whacked it with a hammer when they were putting it in. So what I'm going to do, and i got to cut that nail off, way oversized nail. What I'm going to do is what's called sister boards. So I cut me a couple pieces of 2x4, and I'm going to put one on either side, and it becomes the structural integrity is brought right back in. It's called sister sister studs then i'm just going to take and instead of nailing i'm going to drill in with some good wood screws about two and a half inches long and three inches long and i'm just going to splice these two sister boards into that stud That right there is called a sister stud. So by sandwiching, and I'm gonna do the other side also, by sandwiching two brand new two by fours, you're gonna solidify and strengthen the original. Well, I didn't see any signs of termites, and I did see some signs of some other critters, ants or something. So I'm just gonna put me a little bit of what is this called carpenter and ant termite killer plus and i've been doing that on all my repairs hopefully it's going to prevent anything from getting up inside of there and termites and everything are gonna be uh, not come in here and mess with it. But I can tell you the spiders didn't like it. Well, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my new barrier up and I'm gonna staple that in. I'm gonna use a hand stapler so I'll do just one so you see what I'm doing here. I've already pre-cut those as I spoke earlier. Well, we've got the rain channel installed and that tucks up underneath the original siding and then you'll see here in a moment we'll tuck the new siding up underneath it and i'll come back with caulking exterior caulking and a few layers of paint and that should take care of everything and we'll be waterproof and hopefully good for another 20 years Wow, that's actually that way. 
Actually, I'm looking. Okay, this is the finished product. Went in, caulked where I put the rain flashing. Repainted that lower section just to kind of blend in where I put all my staples and my nails. And just so you'll know, what you do is each time you come to a piece that joins, you staple it back together with industrial staplers. If you do it right, you're gonna be like I am right now, looking for the area that you stapled, which I cannot do. Fine, there we go. That's the last piece. Then of course I touched up some of the original wall, which is faded, so of course we're gonna have to repaint the whole house now. And now I only have about uh, eight more pieces to do. So that, guys, is how you save I'm thinking I saved about $2,000 on this wall alone doing it myself and by the time we're done with the whole house I'm figuring seven eight thousand dollars saved and that's not counting the materials of course you got to buy the materials and I'm gonna go over in some part of this video I'm gonna go over what the materials cost I've already shown you all the tools that I used and at the end of the day I didn't work you know extremely hard I kind of took my time if I got hot I stopped went and took a dip in the pool so like and subscribe I know this isn't our typical videos but as I stated from the very beginning we wanted to do videos showing how we save the money and how we enjoy our life and hopefully you know this is going to help someone else along the line all right then talk to you later Okay, here's all the tools that I used for this project. I have some Allen wrenches that I used to change out my brand new skill saw blade, some box cutters, sorted pliers and snips, a good hammer, assorted different pry bars, a couple different large screwdrivers. I used stainless steel two inch um, siding nails, stainless steel because you do not want the rust, a snap line, a couple different tape measures, and some various cutters, scissors side cutters and some needle nose and of course a pencil then of course you have a couple different levels a skill saw a drill hand stapler a really good quality uh, knife with cutting knife with various type blades and I used a triple coating of peel stop for my primer and Valspar storm coat semi gloss exterior paint and of course some um, sealing tape for my waterproofing that I put up before I put up my siding. Now do you need all these tools? No. Does it help? Yes. It is hot and it is hard at our age but you know what I've been working this project now how long Laura? About four weeks between getting the siding oh, cut prep, yeah just prep work getting it prepped up painting it just whenever i feel like doing it i did it and we now were I'm, supposed to do it on our last vacation but we got COVID. we got covered on our last vacation we spent didn't get two off weeks the sofa. on the sofa <laughs>